Let's have a look at this WR and the state that it's in. It's the last video. The durability test was pretty hard on the bike. <laughs> so it's in a little bit of a state and um, I flew away for work and left it unwashed. So it's time to give it a bit of a tidy up. Take a night off from drinking this stuff with my orange juice. Actually use it for something other than killing brain cells. Oh yeah, it's coming off. Bang, good as new. Apparently with the new WR, they've flattened out the seat. So you're not sitting in it as much. And they've also lowered the foot pegs down a little bit. So you, um, for a taller rider like me, I'm um, six foot one. Um, it feels a lot better with the rider triangle, feels a lot more opened up. Yeah, with the flatter seat, it doesn't feel like you're sitting in the bike so much and you don't feel so crouched. So, with the YZ, I actually got um, foot pegs that were 5mm lower and actually a taller seat foam. With those things, I won't be able to tell you the exact distance of the 22YZ compared to the new WR, but should give us some idea anyway, so let's measure them up. Seems to be some marking. Whoever put that there is packing some heat though. From the foot peg to the seat is 580. 580 millimeters. So if you're from America, we we'll use the metric system because it's a lot easier. It makes a lot more sense, you know? You guys should probably think about converting. So with the 5mm lower foot peg, it's still only 560. 20mm difference between the 24WR and the 22YZ. But keep in mind, the seat foam is probably at least 20mm taller than stock and the foot peg is 5mm lower. So you're looking at about a 50 mil difference that it's been opened up. So another thing they've done with this new model is they have the air getting drawn in from the rear of the airbox instead of the front coming through the shrouds. So that's actually made the bike a lot, a lot narrower. Let's get some measurements from the widest part of the shroud. It's probably about 400 mil wide compared to the last generation which was so that's about in line there I'm gonna say the old generation was about 450 mil wide compared to 400 mil wide on the front shrouds so there's um it's 50 mil slimmer and it's 50 mil taller in between the foot pegs and the seat so overall it feels a lot slimmer and a lot flatter i like a fair bit more nimble so before i go for me ride let's go through some of the specs of the new wr overall it's two kilos lighter so it's gone from 119 kilos to 117 kilos so that's wet weight they fully revamped the motor so the motor is 1.1 kilos lighter than the previous obviously comes with the enduro 18 inch rear wheel geo max Dunlop EN91 tyres, which seem to hook up pretty well. Comes standard with bark busters, so not full wrap around, but these are pretty sturdy. Comes with toolless adjustable dampening on the front forks. Nice little dash setup. Got your odometer reading there and your speed, obviously. The fuel tank is a little bit smaller capacity this year. 
so it's 7.4 litres compared to 7.9 litres. It's got a little fuel light that comes on and that comes on has one third left and no reserve so just like the YZ it's got the map switch so you can pull over put it in neutral and change maps on the fly so that's whatever you've preset the maps to be in your power tuning app it's got this big cluster on the on the back so that's obviously to be fully road compliant as per Australian standards they actually gave me a, a tail tidy so I'm yet to put that on another thing that's worth noting up the front here is it has no key so that's pretty standard with a lot of enduro bikes these days so they're made for more enduro racing so um, yeah obviously lock them up and leave them in your van or whatever if you want to secure them up so it's got a really light clutch on it so it feels similar to a hydraulic clutch as far as how light it feels but you still get the like modular feeling of a cable clutch still so I like that feeling of a cable clutch so out of the box they come quite restricted so I think they've got a restrictor in the muffler and their air intake so Southwest Yamaha um, just takes all that stuff straight out of the bike so that's handy sight glass right there for your oil but yeah it's it's pretty much a fully revamped bike for this generation so nice bit of rain just came through just as I'm about to get geared up yeah so according to the uh, bike shop owner you get about 120 kilometers of standard sort of not too crazy trail riding out of these tanks so that's according to him but sometime on this channel I shall put that to the test and actually see what you can get out of it who did that to me bike <laughs> unbelievable got some wildlife joining me today a couple of emus a couple of baby ones hello the revs up because you can hear the power band kick in so it bogs and then it takes off I think you guys will probably be able to hear it but yeah definitely a bit of a different power curve compared to the YZs don't get me wrong, it's still snappy. It's definitely definitely snappier than the likes of a um, EXC 450. I've ridden one of those. So uh, it's snappier than that. Somewhere in between an EXC and a YZ on the spectrum. Oh, we've got a couple little jumps here. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Yeah, mate. Woo! Be some people annoyed with me. Riding this uh, mountain bike trail on the dirt bike. Stick to the 
single trails until it gets to the middle of the day. It's nearly the middle of the day and there's still bloody skippy skipping around. The joys of living in Australia. Bloody wildlife coming at you every second. the old back situation, you know what I mean? Another wallaby, another wildlife creature. Bloody everywhere around this joint. Another thing I love about the WR is having a freaking kickstand. When you're setting up the tripod and you're filming, if you're on a motocross bike, you've got to find a tree to lean it up against, or whatever, you know. First time I've had a bike with a kickstand, and I'm just loving it. I'm Mick loving it. And by the way, this bike is so, like, because of the power curve, it's not as snappy as the YZ. I'm doing wheelies like so much easier. So, first time I've been able to actually get a full one handed wheelie going. A little bit way forward. Hands off. So, I'm pretty stoked with that. So, I think my, um, my technical skills on this bike are gonna, gonna improve. So, stoked. One thing I just wanted to mention real quick about the gearbox. Okay, so it's got a wide ratio gearbox. So, I haven't had too much experience with riding enduro bikes, but basically, if you haven't ridden one, um, first and second are a hell of a lot lower. So, second basically feels like first on a motocross bike. And then, there's uh, quite a noticeable jump between second and third. So I'd say third is like a standard third on a motocross bike. And then fourth is the same as a motocross bike. And then fifth um, feels like it's taller than a motocross bike. So you've got that wider range there, but third and fourth feel the same. Just having that extra low first gear just comes such in handy. Because it's lower, you don't need to use the clutch as much. And you don't have to worry about it snapping out of a real tight corner as much. So you can go a lot slower with a lot more confidence. One thing about the WR also compared to the YZ, it seems to freewheel a little bit easier. So I think that's good. If I like that or not. Oh, love how I can love first gear, eh? Well, that's a decent workout. Nice stay out of that. Oh, the amount of control and tractability you have in first gear up these hills is insane. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be stuck in the clutch going this way on a YZ. Have a little intermission for lunch. Bike's going sick. Really enjoying riding it. Sickest bike I've ever owned, I reckon. Um, just absolute dream to ride through the bush. A lot easier than a YZ, I'll give you the big tip. So basically, I'm gonna go on a completely private road. We're gonna see what it tops out at with standard gearing in a high speed run. Let's see what it can do. First gear, high speed run, here we go. Second gear.
what it is today. Every time I stop riding, sun comes out, rain stops, start riding, rain starts, goggles fog up instantaneously. So that was real good. Sweet, so the rain's finally stopped. What else about the WR? Just with the, how light and how nice the clutch feels and how low first gear is, I'm able to uh, spin around sitting down on the pea gravel without putting my foot down. I messed up their U-turn. I was doing it piece of cake before I brought the camera out. It's just not ideal conditions. As soon as you bring the camera out, sometimes you just do what I just did then. I think they've done a really good job of mass weight centralization and it's got quite a low center of gravity. So I think that even though there's obviously um, lighter enduro bikes on the market, um, like the way that this feels, like it feels a lot lighter, skinnier and more nimble than the previous generation. So it's definitely up there with a uh, similar feeling of the uh, the Euro bikes. So through the tight stuff, you're weaving, you're bobbing, you're weaving and uh, no dramas. <laughs> it's so much, so much easier to ride through the bush than a YZ. Like I've just been slogging away for the last couple of years trying to make the YZ450 work in the bush and no matter what you do to it, it's not going to be as nice as one of these just straight off the shelf if if you want to do predominantly bush riding. WR is the way to go. So I wish we bought one a couple years ago, but at least I got one now and it's the new generation with all these updates. And it's good, it's got a license plate on it. So that'll allow me to do some moto vlogging and uh, I can go tell the ranger to get stuffed. So yeah, that's my review of the bike. Hopefully you guys learned something and got something out of it. Don't forget to subscribe on the way out and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank you.